Thank you very much. It's a great delight to be able to be with everybody this, this afternoon. And uh, especially grateful to all of you for coming forward to express uh, your own convictions and that united in these convictions, we can make a tremendous difference in our countryside. I believe that the right to life is the most basic of human rights. And therefore, it does not only involve us as a religious community, but really it is the responsibility of all who call themselves human and who have been and have been bestowed with this tremendous gift. And so therefore, I think it kind of is in line, the movement that we're all very much a part of, it's very much in line with what Abraham Lincoln and those who were so very much involved in obtaining the right freedom from slavery some 150 years ago. Also involved, I think, in the great events of Martin Luther King and all of those who sought to make sure that everybody who experienced life here in America experienced it on an equal basis with the dignity that they're truly entitled to. And now we come to the pro-life movement and the same substratum I think is there. The fact that this is a very significant human right. It is highlighted in the Declaration of Independence and it is for all people. Thank God there are the religious people who lead the parade, but we must insist that this is truly and must be achieved on that level. Recently, I was riding my car and was listening to National Public Radio, and there was a woman who was interviewed, and she had a sister who was not a part of the interior family, the nuclear family, because she had been adopted after she was born. She was now 74 years old, and so they had come together, this 70-year-old and 74-year-old, had never met or talked to each other for all of those years, and so it was a wonderful opportunity for them to really see how similar they were in many of the traits that were characteristic of both of them. But they asked the 74-year-old woman that what would she say to her mother, whom she had never seen, never encountered, and who is now dead. She said, well, if I saw her, the very first words that would tumble from my mouth and from my heart are thank you. Thank you for the gift of life. We, that might be counterintuitive, as people might say, well, why did you give me up? Why didn't you keep me? All those sorts of things. But rather, she said, thank you for the gift of life. And what is tremendously encouraging in our own day is just at Catholic Charities that 245 couples have come forward and they want to adopt a child right from our local community. And I think that number could be multiplied if we really push and ask for people to volunteer to come forward because there are so many who really want to share the great gift of life with others. And I hope that is a message that we pass to others, pass to help them realize that their life really wants to be cherished, that people want to extend this great gift in love and experience the, the character that will enable them also to use their talents and their gifts as so beautifully described in the last prayer this morning. And I think as we face the pro-life movement, that it is necessary to make sure that we work in many different areas. The very first one is in education, to make certain that people understand that life begins at the moment of conception. It's a scientific fact. You and I are the same person we were at the moment of conception, just in a different form. But we are that person. And we have to understand that no one is entitled to take the life of another person for the benefit of their own life, unless we know in the problem of the death of the mother, if there should be a risk of taking her life. But apart from that, there's just the moral code that all of us believe that no one can take the life of another person
for the sake of themselves, for the sake of their convenience. That's a moral code. I think it's exceptionally and it's extremely important to share that message with others. And I think also we should look at the great gift of sexuality that is given to us for God's purpose, certainly to share the mutuality of love, but also, of course, for continuing the human race. And it is so important to see the linkage and the importance and the knowledge and the understanding. And I think in our society, it's extraordinarily important in our culture to teach that reality, to enable people to truly understand and live by that also. And finally, I think, as we are so evident today, it's very necessary to approach the issue from a political perspective, from a legislative perspective, from a judicial perspective. And we're so very grateful for the governor and lieutenant governor to be able to be with us today to express their convictions and to undertake their leadership. But I think we have to also recognize that this is a universal human right and that all parties, all politicians, all people should be involved in this if we're going to truly achieve our goal someday. It cannot be a partisan issue. It cannot be a wedge issue. It cannot be something that we just go for a period of time to achieve a certain result, but it has to be universal in character and so we have to keep and pray and work with everyone that that might truly be achieved in our day. We have to have the Lincolns, we have to have the Martin Luther Kings, we have to have all those great leaders who will bring us together as a community to be able to see the truth and then to embrace the truth in the, for the benefit of all of those who perhaps will never see the light of day. So as we gather today, we ask God's continued blessing on all of us. We ask God's continued blessing that we will be strong in our commitment to bringing forth life. We ask him to enable us also to be patient, to be understanding, to work with those who are suffering, who are not with us, and who need to be persuaded, encouraged, and also embraced with the great spirit of love. So may God bless us today, and may he enable us to be ever more encouraged in the days ahead by the truth that will be embraced by an ever greater number of our sisters and brothers in the human family.